Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the daily race. As we, uh, well, we're we're not running a marathon today. We're not we're not sprinting. We're just taking one step forward on this Saturday morning, and uh, we are are marching our way through the book of Isaiah. And uh, today we're we're heading to another another kind of set a block of uh, messages that God has given through Isaiah, and uh, it's kind of the last block in the first half of the book. So. Um, kind of the first first half of the book up through uh, chapter uh, 40 is all messages involving the Assyrian threat. So we've talked a lot about Assyria and this kind of time where there's there's threats. God's warned his people turn back, um, but it hasn't happened yet. Uh, there are many prophecies pointing to things that will happen after that, but they're written in the time of uh, before time. Now, then the next block of prophecies uh, is going to be... Uh, to the exile. So it's happened. They've been taken away. So words of comfort, words of prophecy, that's the next block. And then finally, there's a last block at the very end that talks about um, uh, future things, just uh, threats, uh, end times things uh, for all people for all time. So uh, even though there's mixtures of all of that in here, right? Because we're talking about prophecy, we're, we're looking forward to events. So even though we're in this first part, this pre-exile, um, we talk a lot about the exile. We talk a lot about even beyond that with Christ's final return. Uh, so it's not necessarily as, as easy to make these distinctions, but kind of giving you a lay of the land here where we're at on this journey. Today, the message is to um, to Samaria. Uh, depending on your, your translation, um, it'll say to Ephraim, which is the, the tribe of Ephraim, one of the 10 tribes of the north. Samaria is the city that's the capital uh, of of that area. So um, same people, just kind of depending on how you want to, how the, the translators uh, kind of translated that, that people group there. So uh, the issue today is pride. Uh, they're a very prideful group, um, dependent on themselves. And part of it that we're going to read here today, not only have they made alliances and kind of buttoned down their own security, um, they take joy in their own hands, just the way they choose to celebrate, take comfort in themselves, provide happiness for themselves, provide recreation for themselves through a whole lot of drinking. A whole lot of alcohol seems to be a theme in this one here. So let's let's read here and read God's response. So it starts off by talking about the pride of Samaria, um, and we're going to pick it up here in verse uh, verse 7 of chapter 28. It says, now, however, Israel is led by drunks who reel with wine and stagger with alcohol. The priests and the prophets stagger with alcohol and lose themselves in wine. So, so all the way through, they're religious leaders, they're uh, uh, like regular leaders, <laughs> the, the leaders that lead the country um, are all struggling with this. It says they reel when they see visions and stagger when they read their decisions. So it's, it's so much so that they, they're not in their right mind, that they're not able to make good decisions. It's just this cloud of, of alcohol. It says their tables are covered with vomit. Filth is everywhere. And this is what they say. It's just the, the pride, the level of pride here. Who does the Lord think we are, they ask. Why does he speak to us like this? Are we little children just recently weaned? He tells everything over and over, one line at a time, one line at a time, a little here and a little there. So, they, they think that they're they're smarter than the messages God's are sending. Okay, you just keep sending these same messages over and over again, not realizing that the reason that he's sending them over and over again is because they're not listening. This is their confidence, though, that, that we know what we're doing. Uh, we know how to, to govern, we know how to rule, and we know how to celebrate and recreate. Verse 11, it says, So now God will have to speak to his people through foreign oppressors who speak a strange language. So if you guys don't want to listen to my simple uh, instructions, then I'm going to still speak to you, but it's going to be a much more difficult, painful way. God has told his people, here is a place of rest. Let the weary rest here. This is a quiet, this is a place of quiet rest. So he's telling them, hey, the, to follow me is to have the, the best possible life. Now, I will give you rest, rest from your enemies, uh, rest in in real life, a way to celebrate, a, a way to have the, the good life that you want apart from all of these drunken parties that you're, you're doing. Now, there's a better way to live your life. I want to give you that rest. But they would not listen. So the Lord will spell out his message for them again. One line at a time, one line at a time, 
a little here, a little there, so that they will stumble and fall. They'll be injured, trapped, and captured. Wow. It goes on to conclude um, that this is, this is going to happen, this, this message of, of, of prophecy over them if they don't turn back to God. Uh, but as I was just kind of reading this here, this is, this is another kind of interesting nugget. Like as, I, as I mentioned yesterday, a lot of themes come up over and over again. But this idea that they were not even trusting God with their, their downtime, with their, their fun time, their recreation time, that they were using that in ways that were not honoring to God. They weren't taking the Sabbath and just resting. They weren't taking the, the fruits of their labor and being able to enjoy them. They were, they were twisting them. <laughs> they, were, uh, they were getting drunk. They were making bad decisions, all these types of things. And it's just a good reminder that, that God wants us to honor him in every area of our life. Even the ways that we choose to have fun. <laughs> the ways that we get to unwind. And I think sometimes we, we kind of put that as, as another thing. That that's not a spiritual thing. That, you know, this, this is just how, whatever it is that, that you want to do, whatever it is that you do to, to wind down, to, to recreate, to have fun, is that even honoring to God to you? Or is that something you kind of try to keep separate? No, no, this is, this is the areas of life where it's spiritual and prayer and worship and all these things. And this, this is me time here. This is the time for me to unwind. And one of the messages here, not the primary message, but one of them here is that, no, God wants all of our lives. He doesn't want us to abuse the, the good things that he's given us. Uh, you know, there's no condemnation. As, in fact, as we've read here through Isaiah, there's lots of uh, talk about enjoying the wine, enjoying the fruits of, of our labor. But when we take something and, and take it too far, when we abuse it, when it begins to control us, when it takes us out of the ability to make good decisions and, and think straightly, that think straight, then that's a problem. <laughs> then that's out of bounds and it's not honoring to God. And kind of an unusual kind of spot here to think about um, the things that, you know, alcohol and things like that, but it's part of this passage here today. So just that question, when we, when we unwind, when we have fun, are we still doing that within God's bounds? God's not a no fun God. God wants us to celebrate. He wants us to rest. He wants us to relax. He wants us to have a good time. But but with some boundaries, but with some things that still honor him. All right, we're going to pause right there today, and uh, let me pray as we get our day started. Uh, Lord, we love you, and we thank you so much just for the opportunity we have to, to start our day with you, uh, to spend some time in your word, and, and God, just to remember that, that you want all of us. And God, we know that we, we say those words uh, if given a pop quiz, we would select the, the all answer for how much of us you want. But God, in reality, there, there are different parts of our life. There are different areas that we either intentionally or unintentionally keep to ourselves. God, help us today as we read this, this part here uh, of your word to take an analysis. God, what, what more do you want from us? Uh, what areas can we surrender to you even more fully? Because God, we know the benefits that come with following you that there's nothing that we can place in your hands that's not going to be better for it. So God, we trust you. We, we honor you. We pray that you would work in and through us on this day. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, hey, I hope you have a great, great rest of the day. I look forward to seeing you 24 hours from now right back here on The Daily Race. Love you guys.